Are you excited about who He is? Are you excited about who you are with Him, through Him, by Him, because of Him? Amen? I tell you what, if we are turned to Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're going to try to spend a little time there, and then we're going to attempt to go to Matthew chapter 5. We want to talk about blessing this morning, about being blessed. Amen? I've heard so many people lately talking about being stressed with the holidays and stressed with this and stressed with that. Don't be stressed, be blessed. Amen? Amen. Hey, it, believe me, it is easy to stress. It's easy to get in worry. Amen? But it's also very easy to realize how blessed you are. Amen? You know, you look around and you, you think, well, you know, my family's healthy. We well. We got a warm place to sleep. We had a meal for supper last night. Going to have one today. Amen? We got an automobile to ride in. Amen? We got clean water to drink. How many places in the world today people don't even have clean water to drink? Amen? Drink out of the same hole that the cows and the pigs wallow in and drink out of. Right? Folks, we blessed. Amen? We are blessed. Let's have a word of prayer this morning. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of coming into your house. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one that's here this morning. Lord, I thank you we all come ready, willing to receive your word. And Lord, I thank you right now. Lord, that your word, it never quits, it never fails, it never gives up. And Lord, we thank you, neither do you. And Lord, I thank you right now for allowing me this morning to be your mouthpiece. And Lord, I just thank you for stirring every heart and every mind this morning. Lord, making it receptive unto your word. Lord, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. And we're going to start with uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to start with verse number 1. Uh, before we get started, I know this is the Old Testament, but the Old Testament is still the Old Testament, amen? That's still type and shadow of the New Testament. We're going to see a little bit here in a minute. But uh, the Old Testament hadn't been done away with. It was put out there for me and you to be able to look at and, and see what happened, amen? So don't go to throwing rocks at me this morning because I'm in the Old Testament. Amen? All right, let's start with verse number one. He said, And it shall come to pass... Blessing, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You notice that word, shall. Shall. You know, I got right here in the margin of, of, of my Bible, strongest word in the English, English language, shall. Amen? How many people know that? notice that uh, word right there, that two letters? If. Yeah. Well, I got here in the margin of mine, biggest word. If. Two letters is the biggest word in the Bible. Hey, in your life, if. Right? You think you was doing this, but if you had done that, there'd have been a different outcome, right? If. If, if, if. Amen? So if we shall and we if, we're going to be all right today. Amen? Right. Verse number two. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep said, Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Blessed. You notice a, a chain going here? Verse number 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen? He said the devil come at you in one direction and then he's going to flee from you in the other seven. You know what that means? The Lord's got all the directions covered. 
right? North, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. That's eight directions, right? So if they come at you at one and they flee the other seven, the Lord's got them all covered, don't he? So I would say if we're walking with him, if we'll listen to him, if we'll obey him, we won't have a whole lot to worry about, will we? Man, we got so much light now. I look like I got a halo on, don't I? Verse number 8. said, The Lord shall command the, the blessing upon thee in thy storehouse and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land where the Lord thy God giveth thee. He said, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in them always. Right? And walk in them. Right? His commandments. Is he, is, is he talking about his Ten Commandments? What's he talking about there? Right? What's he talking about there? He's talking about following him, ain't he? Right? He's talking about following his direction. Right? How many people growing up, or you may still have one, had a bracelet? That, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Amen? How many people have had one of those? Right? In, in my family, if we catch somebody saying something or doing something, you know, we pull the Jesus card, they call it. Right? Kind of shame somebody into, into admitting they was wrong. Right? Miranda's the world's worst. She'll pull the Jesus card on you in a minute. Morgan's pretty quick. And Megan, Megan does it too. Every, everybody pull it. Right? But that's what keeps us in order. That keeps our checks and balances going. Right? You say something that you shouldn't say. And, right? How many people we got in here this, this human this morning? Right? So that, that means y'all do say, say things that you shouldn't say. Amen? Oh, yeah. Right? That, that, that does mean that you have thoughts sometimes that you shouldn't have, right? Right? right. I mean, none of us are perfect, right? right? Not in the flesh. Our spirit, all of us are perfect. Right? But in our flesh, how many of us are perfect? None of us, right? right. Like, m- most of us, myself included, are our bodies are far from perfect, right? Amen? Because we have a world that we have to live in. We have a world that we have to deal with daily, if you will. Right? Amen? Right. But just because we're not perfect don't mean we quit. Right. Just because we're not perfect don't mean we give up. Yeah. Amen? I mean, when I make a mistake, I try to learn from it. Now, I try not to do that anymore. Right? Sometimes I do. But that don't mean the Lord's mad at me. That don't mean the Lord don't love me. Amen? Yeah, I've been studying about blessing and grace this week. And I, and I already knew this, but the Lord wants to bless you. No matter what. Amen? He wants to bless me. And it, a lot of, a lot of people think if, you know, if, if, if they do good enough, the Lord's going to bless them. The Lord's going to take care of them. Amen? Don't get me wrong when I say this this morning. But it's got nothing to do with what you do. Amen? Amen? It's got everything to do with what Jesus done. Amen. Amen? Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do good things. I'm not saying we shouldn't take care of other people. I'm not saying we shouldn't pray. I'm not, say, I'm not saying any of that. Amen? But I'm saying if you feel like you've got to earn it, there's something wrong. Amen? If you feel like I don't measure up to receive that blessing, there's something wrong. Amen? You know, I used to feel like, and it's been years ago, but I'll, I'll just tell the truth. You know, I used to, I would need something. Be in need. Not won't be in need. Need something. And I'd look at my wife and I'd say, you know what? I know the Lord knows what we need, but you know, I, I, I can't go to Him in prayer and, and ask Him for it. Because, you know, I, I got busy yesterday and you know, I didn't spend enough time with Him. 
I didn't spend enough time. You know, I know the Lord's mad at me. Right? You know, I, I know I, I didn't qualify. Right? I forgot to clock in and do my time. So the Lord's mad at me. There's no need me even asking Him to bless me. There's no need me even going to Him in prayer because, you know, He ain't going to hear it. Right? I know I'm the only one in this building that's ever done that. Y'all pray for me. Amen? But I found myself every day trying to measure up. Amen? How many people in here we, we, that we got you want to be blessed? How many people? Anybody in here you don't want to be blessed? So all of us want to be blessed, right? Amen? So I was in this Word. I was, I was trying to qualify every day. I was trying to earn what the Lord was, had for me every day. I was trying to earn it. Right? And on the days I didn't feel like I earned it, I just didn't ask for it. I just felt bad. Right? Just got disgusted with myself. Right? But you know what? On those days that I felt like I'd done enough and I earned it, I felt entitled. Right? Getting arrogant, getting proud, ain't I? What did the Lord say he'd do to the proud? Didn't he say he'd resist the proud? Right? So on, even on the days that I felt like I was doing what I was supposed to do and I made it and I'd done something, I was being prideful. Wow. Wow. Amen? I told you, I've been doing some thinking. I've been doing some studying this week. I've been doing some praying. I've been seeing some things. We won't never cover them here in 30 minutes, but we're going to cover some of them. Amen? But the Lord said, I don't want you to spend all your time. I don't want you to spend all of your time looking at where you've messed up. I don't want you beating yourself over the head. Right? Amen? He said, I want you to spend more time with me. Right? Amen. Folks, that's the key. That's the key. To spend time with Him and spend time in this Word. Right? Amen? We as Christians, excuse me, that's our job. Amen? That's our job is to spend time with Him and to stay in this Word. That's your most important job that you've got. Amen? Because if you get out there and you start doing all of this good stuff, and once again, I'm not saying you should. Don't, don't tell everybody. That DW said you ain't supposed to do good stuff. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I will say this. You shouldn't be involved in every good stuff that comes along. Right? Because if you're involved in every good stuff that comes along, where do you have time for the Lord? Where's your relationship? When do you read the Word? Amen? You can overextend yourself real quick. I've done that. See something good and you think, well, I'll just grab hold of that. Bless God, I can do that. Well, that's good. Then you see something else and something else. Before you know it, you've got so many irons in the fire, you can't pull them out before they're melted. Amen? How much good work's getting done then? Right? You're going after everything, you're mastering nothing. Helping nobody. Amen? And I'm not talking about you this morning, I'm talking about me. Right? But the Lord got my attention one day. And He said, I don't want you doing all that. Amen? I don't want you doing all that. I want you listening to me. I want you depending on me. Amen? What was I trying to do by taking care of everything, by being involved, by trying to make everything work? What was I doing? I was trying to earn that blessing again, wasn't I? Hello? I was trying to be good enough. Right? I was trying to qualify. You had never tried to qualify before, have you? That ain't a good place to be, is it? Amen. 
He's trying to, he's trying to give us a gift. We here at Christmas. How many people are going to get a Christmas present this year? Everybody's going to get one, right? Amen? Did you earn it? Was you good enough? Amen? Momo, all that stuff you're going to get for Christmas, was you good enough? I see the halo. I see the halo. The Lord resists the proud. Amen? Amen? No, we're not going to get a, a present, a gift for Christmas because we earned it. Right? Not that we hadn't been good. Not that we may not deserve it. But we're going to get a gift because somebody loves us. Somebody cares for us. Right? Somebody wants to do good to us. Right? Well, what does the Lord want to do? Don't you think He wants to do good to you? Amen? He wants you blessed. Right? Amen? Who wouldn't want to be in, in his family? Who wouldn't want to be in his kingdom? I don't understand. Who wouldn't want to be born again? Amen? Just, but you know what? Once upon a time I was lost. And I didn't see either. Amen? Once upon a time, you were lost, and you didn't see it. Right? Amen? But His blessing, His grace, is based on Him and what He did. Not based on us and what we do or don't do. Right? Right? If we received on the Lord based on what we did or didn't do, where would you be this morning? Where would I be this morning? Just think about that for a second. Where would I be this morning? Where would I be if I got exactly what I deserved? Whoa. Where would you be this morning if you got exactly what you deserve? Amen? I can tell you right now, death would be my, my end judgment if you would. Right now, today. Amen? Because I can tell you I hadn't qualified. I hadn't been good enough. Amen? I hadn't made it. Right? Oh, I've had some good days. But I've had some bad days too. Amen? You remember that day when that individual come in the shop up there and called me a liar? And I, man, I just, I just come unglued. I let everybody see it. Co-workers, just come unglued. Amen? Right? Emptied the count all. I did I did. Everything went in the floor. Pictures, cups, papers, pens. Everything. Right? Went in the floor. What did I deserve that day? What did I deserve? That? Oh, I may have been right. I may have been, it may have even been justified. Was it right, was it right in his eyes? Amen? So what, what would I have deserved after that? What would you have thought if you'd have come in the door and you'd have seen it? Your Sunday school teacher up there coming unglued. What would you have thought? What would you have thought? You thought, I'm not going to listen to that man. That man's a hypocrite. He tell me to do one thing, he's doing something else. Hello? Getting mighty quiet in here. Amen? Right? It is the truth. It is the truth. And I walked out back. 
And I had this, man, I felt awful. I felt awful. You know, while I was doing it, it felt good, though. Amen. All that anger, all that frustration come out. But I got to the back and I thought, man, what did I just do? What happened? And then I stopped and I said, Lord, what happened? He said, well, you remember you said anything that was between me and you? Anything that was in there, you wanted to know about it. He, he revealed it to me. Amen. It was down in there and I didn't even know it was down in there. But he showed it to me. Amen. But you know what? He didn't throw me away. Amen. He didn't say, well, just for that, you're not going to heaven. Just for that, I'm not blessing you today. Right? Hey, I could have lost my job. Hello? It was a blessing that I didn't lose my job. Right? I could have lost my co-worker's respect. It was a blessing that I didn't. Amen? I mean, a lot of times when you offend somebody, they won't listen to you anymore. Right? But they didn't quit. And I didn't quit. But I will tell you this, I went to each and every one of them and I told them what I'd done was wrong. Amen? I had no right to do that. I was wrong. Right? Amen? But the Lord didn't not love me because of what I'd done. He still took care of me. He still blessed me. Amen? Right? So what if I'd have got what I deserve? What if you've done lately that you can say, what if I'd have got what I deserve? Amen? Let's look at Jesus. Did he deserve what he got? Did Jesus deserve what he got? Did he deserve to be persecuted? Did he deserve to be beaten? Did he deserve to be hung on the cross? No, he didn't deserve it, did he? But he done it for us. He gave us a gift. Eternal life. Amen? He blessed each and every one of us with eternal life. Amen? Right? Once again, not because of what we've done. Because of what He's done. Because of who He is. Amen? Let's look at verse number 8. He said, The Lord shall command thee blessing upon thee in thy storehouse, and in all thy settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep his commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. He said, And all people of the earth shall that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee these plenteous goods in the fruit of thy body. Did you see that? In the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Right? What's he saying? He said, be no barren. Right? No barren. Not even in your cattle. Right? That's being blessed. Right? Verse number 12. He said, The Lord shall open unto thee good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto the land in, this, in his season, and to, the, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Amen? shall lend to many nations and shall not borrow. 
Amen? I don't know about you, but I'm striving to lend to many nations and not borrow. Amen? I didn't say it was a sin to borrow. If it was a sin to borrow, why would he say lend? Right? Amen? I'm just saying when we, when we borrow, we become subject and servant to whatever we borrowed, whoever we borrowed from, right? Amen? Why don't we just become servant to the Lord? Trust Him. Depend on Him. Amen? Well, let's just go ahead. Verse number 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandment of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Right? To observe and to do them. Well, you just said it ain't about what we've done. It's not. This is the Old Testament. Right? New Testament, we have grace. They had some grace working in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, we have grace, right? Right? We don't have to qualify. But you know what I found? Since I realized that I don't have to qualify, I find myself being a better person. Because I, I don't always have all of this. You can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and if you do this, it's wrong, and you do that, it's wrong. Right? I was spending so much time trying to make sure that I didn't mess up, that messing up was all I done. Amen? I was always concentrating on sin. Therefore, I was always in sin. Amen? But the Lord opened my eye and He showed me grace. You, you can be blessed. Grace, I've given it to you. It's not about what you've done. You didn't earn it. I give it to you. Amen? Amen? He said, I give it to you. And I want you to be just like me. Amen? Amen? Jesus said, I want you to be just like, my, like me. Because as I am, so are you. Right? In this world. Not pie in the sky after a while, right now. That's a shocker, ain't it? Hey, it took me a while to grab hold of that too. I didn't grab hold of it overnight, I can tell you. I had to, I had to go after it. I had to figure out what was going on here. But once I started, it started making sense with a lot of scriptures I'd been reading and had read in the past and just didn't understand. The light started coming on, if you will. Right? And then I got to a point, a place in my life that I wouldn't focus in on sin no more. I wouldn't focus in on try not to mess up. I was focusing on be the best person I can be. Amen? Who can I help today? What can I do? Right? It, it comes from being about me to being about somebody else. Right? So that's when I started having... A happy life, if you will. Amen? I didn't beat myself over the head. Right? If I got busy, if I got busy and I worked through lunch and I, I didn't, spend, didn't spend any time at lunch at prayer, I didn't beat myself up. Amen? I made up for it that evening. I said, Lord, here I am. Right? What do you want today? What can I do for you? Amen? When you, when you get in that kind of relationship, you go from, Lord, I need this, and Lord, I got to have this, and Lord, you need to do this. You go from that relationship to this relationship. Lord, what do you need today? What do you want me to do? Amen? What can I do for you? Right? What can I do for you? Amen? Right? We've got to 
truck that rides around town here. I hadn't seen it in a long time, but he had a whole back of it painted on now. You know, we've always said, God bless America. He said, America bless God. Amen? Let's bless God. Well, how do you bless God? By your lifestyle. Amen? Amen? By the way you carry yourself. By what you say. But not because you got to. Because you want to. Amen? Remember, Jesus didn't do it because he had to. He didn't crawl up on that cross and die because he had to. He wanted to. Right? You know, the whole time I was growing up, I was hearing how, the, how I, was, I was bad. And this is what you're going to get. Right? Amen? This is what you're going to get. If you don't straighten up, boy. Amen? I thought the Lord had a ball bat waiting. He's just waiting on me to mess up, Brother Keith. You know, all those temptations I was going up against, that was the Lord. He was, he was trying me. He's trying to make me mess up. So that when I did, he could bop me upside the head. That's what I thought. I'm sure the preacher wasn't preaching it that way, but that's the way I took it. That's the way I received it. Amen? And I spent my whole life, my younger life, growing up, thinking that the Lord was mad at me. Thinking that I was worthless. Right? Thinking that I was never going to be anything. Right? No matter, no matter... I had prayed the prayer. I had been born again. I was on my way to heaven. But you know what? I better not have a bad thought about somebody and have a car wreck. Because if I had a bad thought about somebody and I had a car wreck, I wasn't going to heaven. I wasn't going to heaven. Once again, I was spending every day focusing on sin. I was spending every day focusing on trying to be good enough. Amen? And look at what it accomplished. Amen? I was defeated. I was defeated. I was on my way to heaven. And I was defeated. Well, let me rephrase that. On the days that I was good enough, I was on my way to heaven. On the days that I messed up, that I wasn't good enough, I wasn't going to heaven that day. Amen? That don't even sound right, does it? The Lord loves me today, but he's mad at me tomorrow. Mm. How many people in here you got kids? You may be disappointed with your kids, but you ain't going to throw them away, are you? You ain't going to quit on them. Amen? No matter what mine did, I never throw them away. I never quit on them. I never give up. Amen? I always done everything I could to help them. Right? Because I loved them. Right? Just like Jesus. He loves us. He's not going to quit on us. He's not going to throw you away. Amen? Let's look at Matthew chapter 5. We're going to get a couple of these scriptures in anyway. Matthew chapter 5. And... A lot of people call these the, the call this chapter the B attitudes. Amen. We're gonna call it blessed. Amen. Because that's what Jesus called it. Let's look at we're gonna start with verse number three for time. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Well, if if we meek, that must mean we're not proud, right? We're not boastful. What do we say happens to the proud and the boastful? They get resisted, right? But he said the meek inherit the earth. Amen? Verse number 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? He said, go after my word. Right? Right? He said, day and night, go after my word. The rest of the time is up to you. 
You can have all of all the time you want, just day and night be in my word. Right? Day and night. Let's look at verse number 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mm. Some of us still have a hard time qualifying right there, don't we? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen? Well, what if you don't? What if you don't? I've prayed with people. And I said, man, you, you got to let that go. I mean, you, can't, you can't keep holding on to that. I mean, that's eating you up on the inside. You got to let it go. Most of all, the Word says, He said, if, if you can't forgive, I can't forgive. Right? And then to have another Christian look you eyeball to eyeball and say, but you don't know what they've done to me. I don't. But is it worth losing your blessing over? Is it worth you being not forgiven over? Hey, I didn't say it. The Lord did. He's good. He's long-suffering. He's merciful. He's blessed. He's grace. But what are we going to do with that scripture? He said, if you can't forgive, I can't forgive. So what do we do with that scripture? I don't know either. I just know when I get a chance to forgive somebody, I'm going to forgive them. Amen? Amen. I need mercy myself. Amen? Amen. You ever needed mercy before? Amen? You ever said something and then you needed mercy? Shouldn't have said it. You ever done something and you needed mercy? Shouldn't have done it. Right? Well, he said, if you intend on getting that, you better be intending on giving that. Because if you don't first give it, you can't receive it. Amen? Verse number 8. He said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Did you, did you hear that? Blessed are the peacemakers. Right? Not the people that's out here causing trouble. Hello? Hello? I mean, people remember when, when abortion was on every corner and they had all these abortion clinics and people was blowing these clinics up and killing people. And they was doing it in the name of Jesus. I don't agree with abortion. It's wrong. The Bible says it's murder. But what's blowing the building up and killing folks in it? What's that? Sounds like, sounds like murder to me. I didn't agree with it. Amen? But the Lord said, you can't do that. He said, peace. Right? Peace. Amen? Verse number 10. Blessed are they which are Persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's us. That's you this morning, amen? Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven belongs to you this morning, amen? Blessed are ye when men shall revel you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for your sake. Amen? You ever had anybody lie on you before? I have. You all know how it ended. Right? Ended with a cleaned out counter, all that good stuff. Amen? But you know, another incident comes to mind as I stand here. Yeah, you know, I, don't, I don't really know who got it started, but I know somebody come up to the shop and they said, hey, you okay? And I said, yeah, I guess I am. Am I not supposed to be? I mean, what's going on? You know, I heard you and the, you and the pastor got into it. I heard y'all was almost it blows in the parking lot. I don't know anything about that. Amen. I, I mean, I don't know where that come from. But somebody started it. 
somebody had started a room with it. Me and the pastor was mad at one another and we wasn't speaking and we almost got to fighting. And Don't know where that come from. But you know what? If somebody said it, it must be true. Right? Since somebody said it, it must be true. Amen? But there was no truth to it. None. Amen? But people want to get things started, don't they? Lord, help them. Verse number 12. He said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. He said, What they done to you, they've already done to me. They've done to the other prophets. Amen? Just know that you're not the only one. Amen? Verse number 13, and we're going to close. We're going we're to try to get verse 14. He said, You are the salt of the earth, but if thy salt have lost its Savior, wherewith shall it be salt? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden underfoot of men. Amen? He said, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hid. A city set on a hill cannot be here. How many people in here are you born again this morning? You know I'm on my way to heaven. Can I tell you this morning you're a city on a hill? Amen? I'm going to give you some shocking news in closing. The whole world is watching you. People that you don't even know are watching you. Are watching you. Amen? That's not the shocking news. You already know that. Here's the shocking news. Most of the people that are watching you want you to fail. Amen? They want you to fail. Most of the people watching me want me to fail. Amen? Why can't we just be happy for one another? Amen? I mean, if my brother gets a new truck, I, I'm happy for it. Looks good. I don't have to have one. I'm proud for him. If, he, if he's got one, I'm, I'm thankful. He's, he's able to have one. Amen. Amen. When I need one, the Lord will give me one. He always has. Amen. Yeah, I don't need a bass boat and two jet skis and three swimming pools and two houses. I can't use all that. But... If John's got it, that's good. Amen. I'm, I'm happy for it. If that makes him happy, I'm happy for him. Amen. Right. right. People, we need to get back to this word. Amen. And I know that we in it in here. But the rest of the world's got to get in it also. And we are the keys to unlock people's hearts. Amen? And how do we do that? Right? We all talked about being blessed in here this morning. Right? And we all want to be blessed. But why did he say he was going to bless us? So that we could store it up. So that we could open up two more bank accounts. So that we could tear our small barn down and build a bigger barn. Is that why he said he was going to bless us? No, he said, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Be good to somebody. Do something good for somebody. Amen. You want to feel good. You want joy in your heart. Do something for somebody. Amen. Buy them some groceries. Put them some gas in their car. Amen. Pay the electric bill. Right? Not because you got to. Because you want to. Because you know the Lord, He's going to take care of me. Amen? Right? And I'm not saying nobody in here does for other people. I'm not saying you don't give. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. Amen? I'm just saying if you are doing that, continue to do that. Amen? Because the Lord wants you blessed. But He wants you blessed so you can bless somebody else. 
so that they can bless somebody else and bless somebody else. Amen? I love you this morning. I appreciate you being here. You get something out of that this morning? Lord, open your heart just a little bit. Remember, it's not about what you've done or what you do. It's about what Jesus did. It's about about His blood that He shed for me and you. Amen? As Brother Keith has said in the past, everybody overlooks the blood. It's always about what can I get? What did I do? How do I receive? Well, what about what He did? Amen? If it's going to be about what we do, if we got to qualify, what about what He did? Just something to think on. Let's have a closing prayer. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again for coming in this place. Lord, I thank you that each and every one of us, Lord, we received your word this morning. Lord, I thank you for continuing to work with our heart. Lord, continuing to feed us this word. And Lord, I just thank you that we'll continue to grow in it. Lord, it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for being here. I appreciate you.